Uh, my name's Howie Gale. In my past life, I was a former professional footballer um, with, with Liverpool, started up with Liverpool, uh, played for a number of clubs, um, retired in 1994. And I'd always ask this question again, um, why I was the first black player to play for Liverpool, but within a, a 13, 14 year um, career, nobody else broke out of here. And so I moved back in and, and started a football club to, to help progress and provide opportunities in football but also life skills for, for the young people of our community. Again, as I say, born in Liverpool, eight, but moved and was brought up in a, in a predominantly white area. In fact, we were the only, well, us and my and um, me uncle Willie, my mum's brother, we were the only black families up in that screen. So it was, a, it was testing times in many cases. Again, it was horrific experiences. After school again, I remember again, I was, I was the subject of the activity of, of school fights. Everybody wanted to fight the nigger um, when I first went to that school. But after a few fights again, as I say, they didn't want to fight the nigger no more because the nigger could fight. And the, the nigger was in a habit of, of, of hating people to make, make, the, the, um, make sure that the rest of them seen what, what the opposition was like. Um, this was again, it was a lesson that was taught to me by, by my older brothers and it, it, it served me well. Uh, my name's Oleka, I'm 28. I'm a creative, I do a lot of different creative things. I think I started my creative journey doing photography, um, all different types of photography. I used to love doing street photography, then I got into wedding photography. I've done paparazzi work, which I absolutely hated. Uh, I've done videography as well, working on documentaries. I'm just a very active person. Uh, I get into different fitness activities, like I'm doing skating at the moment, I've done climbing, I've done, done everything. <laughs> I can't remember what else, but yeah, I'm, just, I'm creative, basically. So my mum, um, she was actually adopted into a, another family, who's my, who like, that's where my second name comes from, but they're a white family. It was a bit different, because I spent more of my time in like True Baruch and Everton ways. I lived in Toxteth growing up, but I was in between both, I visiting family all the time. Um, and I did notice that I had different hair texture, I had a different complexion, I had different views um, and things like that. So growing up in Liverpool was quite an experience. My name's Patrick Graham and um, I'm 53 years young and what I do basically at the moment, I'm, I'm a reporter for the local newspaper and in my spare time as well, which I've done for a number of years, I'm a, I do creative writing, writing from poetry, um, I've branched out into storytelling, now short stories especially aimed at young children, um, just to create characters that are reflected of, of myself, you know what I mean, when I was growing up there was no black characters in any stories that I can recall, you know, one or two, but they were quite negative. Um, descriptions of them, you know, like the black guy and all mice and men and things like that where racial terms are used, but, you know, just the everyday children's character. So it doesn't matter whether the child's from China, India, Jamaica, Nigeria, they can relate to being six, seven years old and, and, and enjoying the adventure that this child's on. Yes, uh, Errol Graham, uh, 57 years of age. Um, done quite a few things. I would describe myself as a community activist from a very young age. Bit of a chef, homemade, uh, home taught. Went to mum and dad's university, I always describe it as, and um, into a lot of the things like well being and stuff like that with surrounding food. So I use food and um, music as uh, activism, part of the Liverpool Black Men's uh, Group, which is a new formed organisation. Yeah, I would just say that that's me. Times have changed dramatically. Um, and in some sense, uh, my older children experience similar things to what I experience. 
you know, my oldest son and my oldest daughter. But my youngest daughter didn't experience it until she left school, which was kind of weird. And the first time she ever experienced anyone calling her the N-word, I can just remember her coming into the, coming in the home one day and then a friend had been in town and she was trembling like a leaf. I could say that times have changed dramatically because she didn't go through that trauma that I think I realized at the age of six, seven, eight, that there was a big difference in your skin color, you know? And um, it made um, life really hard for us, you know? I would say the skinheads and the teddy boys and people like that give us a warm time, you know? Anytime we wanted to go anywhere, just to even go shopping, we had to go in a gang, you know, just to just to survive around here. Being um, 63 years of age and of, of a, a wealth of experience in life and of the different connotations of, of racism and how it protects and how, how it's attached to us as, as black people. And um, sometimes again, it can be subtle. Sometimes again, it can be ruthless. Sometimes it can be obvious. Sometimes it can be hidden, but it's, it's, it's having that notion and that, that experience again to, to, to see it and to deal with it. Yo, what's happening? My name's Kadeem. I'm in a band called Love. Um, I really enjoy playing music. I'm 26 years old, and I'm on my way to try and make it a career. <laughs> Yo, what I'm, I'm um, Harper, also known as Don Dupi from New Tribe. Um, make music, dance, create all the elements. Um, it's what I do. It's what I strive for. I just, I, I love expressing myself like in any way, shape, or form. As I said, the I like to delve into all plas uh, categories of the industry, like any creative realm. So any side I can delve into, you can learn lessons from this, learn lessons from that. You can apply to this and apply to that, and that's what I strive to adore. I'd say I'd say pretty much the exact same thing. Really, it's just expressing myself and just living my life as authentically as possible to me. Mm. Um, that's that's always been an important thing, like regardless of whether it's cool or not, as long as I'm, I'm enjoying it, it. Yeah. <laughs> then that's all that matters. Yeah. Growing up in talk stuff, I've seen a lot of people who looked like me and felt comfortable in that sense. But when I went through my teenage years of being into like metal or rock and all of that, and venturing out into like more white spaces, it kind of gave me that like, mm. do you know what I mean? Yeah, not yeah. being comfortable with who I am as a person because I don't see that anywhere in the environment that I wanted to be in, do you know what I mean? But um, it's almost like a question of my blackness when I tell people I'm in a metal band. I've even had people be like, oh yeah, mixed race in it. You're obviously you're gonna be into metal. And I'm like, what? <laughs> That's mad. Do you know what I mean? Like That's a madness. Yeah. But um, definitely like, I feel like I almost had to prove my blackness more when I shouldn't, you know what I mean? Um, Cause obviously, Metal and rock and all that is a very white dominated genre. What? Even though it stemmed from. That's what I was about to say, bro. <laughs> the, the, the roots of metal and rock all come from blues. Who yeah. created blues? Where did that all come from? You get me? So, it's one of them. <laughs> My name is Nikki Blaze. Um, I've been around for quite some time. I am a, a, a workshop leader, mentor in um, hip hop performance skills, a spoken word, poetry, lyricism, and also I am an illustrator. Okay, so this area that we're in now is um, Lodge Lane, as you can see, and I lived here from the age of four to the age of 15. I would say it is probably what makes me the person I am today. Even though there's been a lot of ups and downs, a lot of craziness went on along during that time. Um, it was also a revolutionary time as well for black people um, in terms of hip hop, stuff like that musically. We were kind of post riot kids, shall we say. Um, so we were still on that like political level of ah, this is our area yeah, going on. So yeah, so I, a lot of what went on around them times really built me to be the person I am today, and I wouldn't I wouldn't change it for the world, even the downsides. As an MC, as a female rapper as well, you know, even though 
my peers and my friends. I had to fight for the mic around that time. You know, they were like, oh, don't give her the mic. Uh, 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 she, she's not ready yet. Ah, uh, hell yeah, I was ready, man. You know, so, you know, it was very tough getting in them studios and proving me worth and all that type of stuff. But I, I got right in there. I started YouTube. My main aim, I started it when I was about 17. The main aim of it though was just to raise awareness about CSE, which is child sexual exploitation. But I didn't know how to, to go about it, so I just put funny videos up. And then when I changed it, to speak about more serious issues, didn't get the, the response that I was hoping for. So I thought, I need to do this in a different way. So I started the page, oh, Junie. So what that is, is I'm building a community through the gaming world to just make sure that, you know, it's an inclusive space for everyone. I do workshops with a, a group of girls from Manchester. They're called the Rain Collective. And what they do is, well, what we do is, we deliver workshops to people who work with, with um, kids. So we'll, we've delivered workshops to like the police, to counsellors, just anyone who works with, with um, children, teachers, um, nurses, and we speak from our own experiences on how we felt we feel like we've been failed by the system. Not only does it help me live my truth when I'm doing creative things, but it also it helps a lot of people. Like I have so many people direct messaging me, um, telling me, telling me about their experiences. And a lot of the time, I'd say about 90% of the time, I'm the only person that they've told. I'm giving myself a voice and and offering other people a voice too. Growing up in talk stuff and that, like, there's a lot of um, stigma. Like, yeah, stigma or like expectations of the type of personality you should have from being from there. Like, even growing up, going outside the talk stuff in Liverpool, you almost carry a badge around with you to be like, oh, you're from you're from talk stuff. Yeah, when people are talk stuff, oh, you're from oh, like, right. It's bad, but it's, yeah, it's not even that bad, man. Like, come through. It's the like the most welcoming area. Probably yeah, in Liverpool. I, get me, like, I don't know, man. I just think. Talk stuff gets too much of a bad rep when people are just listening to what others are saying and not actually experiencing the place themselves. Like there's a very wholesome community vibe in Talk Stuff that doesn't get enough appreciation, man. like really. Coming to somewhere like the Methodist, what we're standing outside of now, it was like, I can only describe this as like, sanctuary somewhere over the rainbow paradise you know what i mean it was just like when you were in here it was just some of the best moments of growing up as a child that are in this i wouldn't even say some all of the best moments of me growing up as a child are based in this youth club i always talk about it still now you know what i mean i just think for my era you know the 70s and going into the 80s if you didn't go to methodist you missed out on such what i can only describe as a wonderful part of your childhood which which actually made amends for all that um, brutality and verbal abuse that we received. Our age group, we have witnessed some incredible things over the, our, yeah. our times. We've witnessed the fall of the Berlin Wall. We've witnessed Nelson Mandela being released from prison. You know, we, 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 we've witnessed the uprisings in 81, the ones that came after that. We've seen things change around the country. We've seen some incredible changes in our lifetimes. You we're know, and we're still quite young at in the that dawn of the fall of the British Empire. That's what a lot of us overlook. Mm -hmm. From the 1960s, 50s into 60s onwards, by the time the 70s, like what we witnessed in South Africa was the last bastion of okay. colonialism, it's true. you know? So when we're born, we're born in such dynamic times. And that's why I keep relating to the music, the atmosphere of, of, of our upbringing was so positive because these shackles and these chains of, 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 of what we could call mental and physical slavery were being broken down, you know? And um, I'd like to see a world of peace. Like Martin Luther King says, you know, we're little black boys and little white boys, uh, you know, could run together and yeah, so, Jew, yeah. Gentile, yeah, you know. To be appreciated for the content of the mind rather than the, the color yeah. of the skin. It's important so that the, um, there's representation for those younger black females coming up because it's incredibly hard. You know, it, this has been going on throughout history from time to time. 
You know, when you get when you're young, you think, oh, it'll change in 10 years time. It'll change in 20 years time. That's not the case. It's not the case. So, you know, we need to also support each other a lot more as well. I do see changes in the future anyway. Now I can see a movement happening. But as, as you know, and as we all say, it's not moving fast enough. So the only way it's gonna move fast enough is we do come to together as a collective. And if other female artists start, artists start supporting each other a bit more as well, stop fighting for that number one spot and come together a bit more. And people outside of that need to support us. I'm never gonna sugarcoat being a black uh, female artist in Liverpool because the realism in it is you are gonna come across a fight. You are, there's gonna, some, gonna be some barriers and struggles that you're gonna come across. So just keep it moving and believe in yourself because there'll be times where you feel like no one believes in you. So the one person to keep it moving is you. Believe in yourself, keep it moving and enjoy what you do. Ha 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 